So you just got a Monstera and you're super happy and excited to get those instant tropical vibes in your house. Or maybe you're a little bit apprehensive because you're not sure how to take care of it. That's okay, because in this video, I'm gonna give you a simple step-by-step -step guide on how to take care of your Monstera. Lighting, watering, what type of fertilizer to use, repotting, all the things that you need to know to have a big, happy, healthy Monstera. Just so you know, this is probably gonna be a lot easier if you got your Monstera from a plant boutique rather than a big box store like now, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you get your Monstera home is clean the leaves. You don't wanna bring any pests home from the plant shop. That's where a lot of your pests are gonna be coming from. So what I like to do, grab my leaf like this, and I like to give it a good wipe down on the fronts and on the backs. The backs is where I want you to pay special attention because this is where the pests actually like to hide. Throw on your favorite pest control too, if you have one. That'll give an extra little step of protection and make your leaves look nice and shiny. Now the reason I want you to do this, we're gonna be knocking off any of the bugs that may be on the backs of the leaves, the fronts of the leaves. If you have some sensitive leaves, you might need to support them with the back of your hand right here so you don't get any damage. Now I do like to keep them separated from my other plants after I give them a little wipe down, just a little quarantine. This is gonna help avoid the plants spreading any possible pests or disease to your other plants, if it has any in at all. Hopefully you got them when you hosed them and wiped them down though. Now, if you don't have a light meter, one of the best things you can do to make sure your plant is getting bright enough light is actually to get down at your plant's perspective, right where the leaves are, and look out at your window. The best thing you want to achieve is a wide view of the sky. The more blue you can actually see from your plant's perspective, the better. That's going to be brighter light. You know, where monster grow naturally outside like we were just showing, they have a wide view of the canopy and they get the light from those little breaks in the canopy. But inside, we only have one break in our canopy, the canopy being the roof of your house, and that is the old window. So we wanna make sure we have unobstructed view of the sky for our Monstera. Monstera love bright light. There's nothing more important to a Monstera than really, really bright light. In nature, they actually grow in full shade, climbing up trees kind of like this one, which measures several hundred to around a thousand foot candles if you're using your light meter. Uh, now it looks like my Monstera isn't going to be getting enough light here to grow just from the natural light. So I'm actually going to be using this grow light, which is a Soltec Solutions Vita grow bulb, just in my little stand right here. I'm gonna keep it on there for 12 hours per day, and I'm gonna make sure it's about eh, 24 inches away or so. Now Monstera are really forgiving when it comes to the watering department. For best results, you wanna water when they're about 25 to 50% dry. I like to use a knitting needle, so I'll stick it down about 25%, stick it in the soil, and then if my chopstick comes out without any soil on it, I know it's ready to be watered. Now, if you go beyond that, it's not that big of a deal. The Monstera might wilt a little bit if you go 75 or 100% dry, but it's not gonna die on you, right? Now, I would say if you're unsure if it's 50% dry, 25% dry, just wait a little bit longer. Wait another week just to be sure. They are much more tolerant of underwatering than they are overwatering. Speaking of soil, your Monstera is gonna do well in a wide range of mediums. You can do full water culture, you can do semi-hydro, LECA, you can do pond, lechuza. There's so many different ways. Soil, of course. That's actually what I've been growing in for the past few years, which is our Aeroids Dream Come True soil mix that we sell in our store. This is equal parts peat moss, orchid bark, and perlite, as uh, well as a special little ingredient that makes your plants grow big, nice and organic. But this mixture is going to hold on to just a little bit of water, but mostly it's gonna provide a lot of airflow to your roots, which is really important at combating root rot, making your life a lot easier. Now I recommend repotting your Monstera every one to two years, or when the roots are starting to come out of these bottom drainage holes, that's a sign that your plant needs a little bit bigger of a pot. Now, if you're keeping these plants indoors, I only recommend going up one to two inches larger than the pot size that it's currently in. This is going to help your plant dry out a little bit faster, a little bit of moisture control so that you avoid that root rot. Of course, you can go in a much larger pot, but you're gonna have to be very careful about your watering and it also increases your chances of root rot. For me, I would like to keep it in a tighter pot and just repot more frequently. But even so, going up this one to two inches, I'm only repotting like once a year. Not a big project, I do it in the spring, no fuss, no muss. Now you see here I have a terracotta pot. This is actually my number one recommendation. This is clay and clay breathes. So air to your roots is what's going to help you combat that root rot. 
You totally can use a plastic pot or whatever you want, sealed ceramic. I like to use this for best results because again, you're surrounding the root ball with air, which is going to help you combat that root rot, the number one reason people don't do well with their plants. Now, fertilizer is gonna help your Monstera grow huge. There's two ways to go about it though. So you have a synthetic fertilizer and you have an organic fertilizer. Here's what you need to know. A synthetic fertilizer is fantastic to use. Just use a general purpose synthetic fertilizer year round. Something like 15-15-15 or 20-20-20 is great. The thing to keep in mind, however, is that if you're only using natural light to grow your Monstera and you fertilize too heavily going into the fall and the winter months that are shorter days, you risk burning the leaves of your Monstera. This is because light is what processes that fertilizer, but in those shorter days of the fall and the winter months, there may not be enough time for your plant to process all of the synthetic fertilizer in the soil so it can build up and you can burn the leaves of your plant. Alternatively, you can use an organic fertilizer. The good thing is you can use these organic fertilizers on all of your plants and they're not gonna burn your plants. So I like to use them year round. Now, Monstera get really, really big. So now that you know how to grow them really, really big, eventually you're gonna have to prune them down because otherwise they'll eat you out of house and home. They get massive, like I said. And there's two really good ways to propagate your Monstera, or at least ways that I really like to propagate my Monstera. And the first one is going to be just by taking a cutting. Now, you don't have to save any of the cuttings. You can just prune it wherever you want. If it's getting too big somewhere, just cut it down. Cut wherever you want, doesn't matter. I like to do this project in the spring, whether I'm just cutting it down without propagating it or if I'm going to propagate it. So if you want to either increase the size of your collection, AKA have more Monsteras, or maybe you want to share one with a friend, what I want you to do is actually find a node on the plant right about here, and we're gonna take that cutting and we're gonna put it in some water. Now nodes are anywhere a leaf comes out of the main stem. It might look like a little bump like this, but it might also be a full blown root right here. This is the cutting that we're going to take. So go ahead and trace it all the way down right behind that node. Put your nice clean pruners right there and give it a good snip. And this is what we're gonna propagate. Now that you have your cutting, go ahead and fill it up with some tap water. You don't need a whole lot. You really just need enough to fill up the bottom so that when you put your cutting in there, it reaches this bottom node. I like to top off the water whenever it dries out and uh, that's gonna be good to go. Wait till it has several roots and then you can replant it, gift it to a friend. But my favorite way to propagate Monstera is actually with a little plastic bag. All you have to do is rip the sides just a little bit. This is gonna be a technique called air layering. It's the most consistent way or the, the highest success rate to actually propagate your Monstera. Okay, I only wanna do that about halfway. And then I'm gonna throw a little bit of soil in here. You can use soil, you can use moss. I like to use soil because it tends to stay wetter a little bit longer and I'm kinda lazy. So I'm gonna fill up my bag about halfway with the soil mixture. I'll have to do some cleaning later. Now what I'm gonna do is take this soil and my goal is to get the soil to come in contact with my little node down here, the one that I shared with you earlier. So what I'm gonna do is sort of tuck this in on the pot. We're gonna get that node to come in contact with that little bump on there. And then we are going to wrap it around just like so. Now we can secure it with some tape. Now, the great thing about air layering is that you don't have to actually cut it away from the mother plant. So you can use the energy of the entire big root system and all the leaves to actually push energy into growing these roots for you. Whereas when you take a cutting, it's kind of on its own. So that's I think why this has a much higher success rate than just like a water propagation. You're not cutting it away from the plant. There's nothing shocking to the plant when you take these types of uh, air layers because you're not making any cuts. There's nothing different for it. It's just growing roots because it's coming in contact with water. So what I like to do now is I like to just sit and wait. You can hide this behind your pot a little bit, maybe turn it one way so people don't see it if that bothers you. But keep your soil damp and pretty soon in the next, I don't know, six or eight weeks or so, you're gonna see this bag start to fill out with roots. That's why I actually like to keep it in a clear bag because I like to see those roots form. But once all the roots are formed, you can again cut behind that node and now it already has the roots. You can pot it up into a pot just like that. Did you know these plants also fruit an edible fruit? It kind of tastes like pineapple and banana. I actually tried one a couple of years ago, posted it on my TikTok. It's unlikely that this is actually gonna fruit within your house, but it's kind of fun to know that it has the potential to fruit. So if you ever get the opportunity to try a Monstera fruit, I highly recommend it. It tastes amazing, but make sure it's ripe first because they're actually toxic if they're not.